Is it now the case that Premiership footballers care more about children going hungry than most MPs? So this is, of course, as a reference to Marcus Rashford uh, and his campaign to get free school meals throughout uh, the holidays uh, and, and Labour has supported the idea throughout the holidays until Easter. I mean, Anne, obviously I'm, I'm going to come to you first as Children's Commissioner for yeah. England. Um, well, certainly uh, Marcus Rashford, uh, young guy, 22, really talented individual and footballer, has rocketed this issue uh, centre stage. It's something that people have campaigned for for a long time, but he brings that personal experience. And, you know, what he's able to do is say, look, for these kids, life is limited in every way. You know, I can't forget the first time I went into a secondary school and saw food banks and saw washing machines actually there to wash the kids' clothes. That's the reality for a growing number of children. And one which, you know, may... The, the accusation last night was that it was sticking plaster. It may not be the full answer, but actually we need a long-term plan. Until we have it, the bottom line surely has to be that children get the help they need to not go hungry. And I remain absolutely astonished that we're still having this debate. Uh, it's 2020, you know, a wealthy country. It has the air of Dickensian about it. Um, and I actually think that people do want to do the best for kids. Um, and we've done that. Government's been bold and generous in providing free school meals over recent months. And to continue that while we're in the midst of the crisis and pandemic, to me, sounds a basic. So what do you make of, of comments, for example, from one Tory MP in, in, during the debate, uh, where is a slick PR campaign encouraging absent parents to take some responsibility for their children? I don't believe in nationalising children. Well, there's always a debate, you kind of have children, you should look after them, kind of a bit like pets. Um, but again, I thought we'd kind of move beyond that. Um, of course families want to look after their kids, of course they want to provide for them. But we know that reality is that kids often do not have food in the cupboards. I had a, a, a group of Newsround kids come to see me, really bright individuals, um, but they told me they would go home and not know what was in the cupboards. And for a lot of us, that's difficult to imagine what that means, but it takes away all your confidence, all your self-belief and all your ability, actually, that the future is going to have any promise for you. So I think, you know, we are in the middle of the pandemic still. We are at crisis point. There's a growing number of children who are in poverty. That's not going away. It needs a serious plan. Um, and I want government, and I would say this, whatever government was there, actually to see it as their mission that they reduce poverty and food poverty. It is something that governments can do. Um, we've seen po pension of poverty reduced drastically over recent years. But really, the focus has to be because if we're going to level up and, you know, if anyone's going to, you know, in the northeast, we, everyone wants the northeast to succeed. But actually, people have to be able to know where, that they're going to be able to uh, be financially viable to do that. And kids need to know that they're going to be able to succeed and thrive. Martin, you're a teacher, of course. What's your perspective? I am. Um, so one of the basic rights of a child, according to the UN, is to the, the right to nutritious food. And I think the comments in Parliament, for example, it's, in, it's really important to remember poverty is not a choice. It's not a lifestyle choice. And children have the right to nutritious food. And I think really we need to sort of, the government needs to sort of understand that. And actually, if they can fund Eat Out to help out, then surely they can fund something that would prevent children from going hungry. David Jasper. Thanks, Fiona. Um, I just find it hypocritical that uh, they voted against extending the free school meals and, and yet they voted themselves a £3,000 plus pay rise. Well, they didn't vote it for themselves. I mean, it's, it's an, an independent committee that... I've got that right, Nicky, haven't yes, I? That's that, right. And Bridget, that, that does that. But, but I, I hear your point. Uh, Stephen, what, do, what did you make of the debate and, and Marcus uh, Rashford's well, campaign? I think... First of all, I think Marcus Rashford, what an inspiring young man. And I have to say, it is really impressive to see, and we were used to other kinds of headlines about footballers, and, uh, but to see this young man be such a role model and, and really inspiring in his courage and bravery to stand up for something he really believes in. Um, and, uh, and I think the government... And do you think the government was right to, to, to oppose the so motion? So we had a, a brief discussion. It came up in the previous question. It was about trust. And it was about the, the social cohesion and trust in the government. And we've seen countries around the world that have done well with coronavirus, uh, the COVID-19 response, 
that have both trusted in the people and have the trust of the people. And if you look at Jacinda Ardern's um, election win in New Zealand, it's been described as an example of compassionate competence. This is a different kind of democrat, uh, democratic so government. I still and, don't uh, know whether you think the government should have no, backed it or not. I think it's an absolute own goal. I think it's, it, so they it's should just, have. I don't understand how it is that e even if they don't believe with the detail of this, they could at this time vote against money for children. And I think one of the things we're seeing with uh, COVID-19 is it is exacerbating and making worse social divides that we already have in this country. We have a huge problem with uh, inequality. Um, OVO Energy is a foundation. One of our investment themes is early years education. And there is such a dramatic problem with the, uh, the fact that in the 21st century, children that grow up in Britain, their economic uh, uh, success in life is already mostly predictable at the age of five. And, and, and we just need dramatically more investment in children, in education, and free school meals for children on school holidays is just so obviously an ex uh, opportunity for the government to show some compassion. Bridget. I mean, it's just inexplicable that in the middle of this terrible pandemic, as we come into a really difficult winter for lots of families, that the government won't support this. I think Marcus Rashford has done an incredible job um, as someone who was himself once poor and hungry, speaking up for vulnerable children who don't have a voice and to make sure that no child goes hungry this Christmas. I mean, we are such a wealthy country with great opportunity. And it is a scar on our country that so many children um, grow up in poverty, avoidable poverty. The government could step in, not just in this area, but I think, you know, as, as Anne was just saying that, you know, this is one aspect of what we've seen as a growing trend in recent years, where more and more children, including those in families where there is work, are finding that money just isn't there and it doesn't stretch. And that's putting families in an impossible position. Now, you know, I, 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 when I grew up, as someone who spent part of my childhood on free school meals in a single parent family, I was lucky. Lots of the other kids I grew up with weren't so lucky and they weren't so fortunate. I thought we as a country, we could put those days behind us. We're going backwards. And it okay. just, it breaks my heart to see kids in my community just going hungry in this, in the midst of this terrible, terrible crisis. Joseph. Well, I find uh, this debate uh, actually amazing. I, I, I do find what the government did unconscionable. You know, in New York City, when we closed the schools uh, in the lockdown, one thing we kept was the school lunch programs. People could go to the schools and get the lunches that they would have otherwise gotten. You know, a lot of careful uh, social distancing and all that. But the fact that a child who doesn't get food can't be scarred for life and obviously uh, can't learn uh, in the way that they should. So uh, as everybody's been saying, uh, it's a basic human right. The unit is the child. Your child is a person. Uh, you're talking about the future of the UK and uh, the fact that uh, you're, we're not, uh, you're not in the Dickinsonian uh, era, you're, you're in the 21st century that uh, you would be having this debate about whether ch children should have adequate nutrition, uh, I find uh, quite unbelievable. I mean, Nikki, you supported uh, legislation that would give the poorest children free school meals over the holidays back in 2017. Mm. Is this a good look for the government? Well, I, I think the Labour Party might have found they got more supporters yesterday if the Deputy Labour leader hadn't called one of the Conservative MPs scum in, in the course of the debate. I mean, I have to say, yesterday's debate... I'm not sure that anyone's defending that, but that's not, that's not exactly the point, well, is it? The, the point is, if you want to build a, a, a coalition, it, it, uh, we've heard comments saying it's unconscionable that the government didn't support this. Well, if the Labour Party had really wanted, uh, and I think that Marcus Rashford, unfortunately, he complained about it becoming politicised, if the Labour Party really wanted support, they wouldn't have made it what's called an opposition day debate. There will be other ways to build a coalition in Parliament. And I should just challenge the fact that obviously his education uh, secretary... So was it, was it, sorry, put, was it a political reason then that the government didn't support it or did the government not support it because it, it doesn't believe in it? The government has put in money dramatically to expand free school meals uh, anyway. No, no, I get that. I'm just trying to understand why cuts. the government didn't support it. Yes, well, is it because they didn't like the way Labour, Labour, Labour put the motion or because the government doesn't believe on it, in it 
on print. The government has spent over £300 million this year in making sure that school meal vouchers can be redeemed. And actually, to answer uh, Joe's point, that obviously when schools were not open in the spring and summer of, of this year, that is exactly when the government did put those hundreds of millions of pounds in to make sure that uh, meals were available to those children who would otherwise be on free school meals. Um, I personally think there are other ways, um, Anne's made a good point about needing an overall strategy, quite right, we can't do that in the middle of a pandemic, but actually making sure we work with local authorities, for example, who are, the, the, the clues, free school meals. So we, we give support to children at school uh, and you know, pre-breakfast clubs and, and after school clubs and everything else. But at other times, when, when the schools have been open, there are other ways in which to get money, and the government is putting money into local authorities. But we could, I'm sure we could do more uh, to put money via local authorities to support families in need. But yesterday's handling of the debate, I say, watching that toxic uh, debate in Parliament, uh, watching the way that it was, it was handled, Bridget knows if you want an issue really tackled, don't put it down as an opposition day motion if you want to build a coalition in Parliament. So kids the go hungry this Christmas this because you don't like the parliamentary process? If you want, if you really, the Labour Party, want to achieve, you, if you really want to get people uh, supporting this debate, then as I say, you know, labelling uh, Conservative MPs unconscionable, un 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 unparliamentary uh, words, uh, and then the way that it was dealt, absolutely not. The government is putting that money in. The better thing would be to work together to make sure that actually local authorities and schools are able to get that money and help to support those children who are uh, obviously otherwise not getting uh, support at uh, home. I need to get some more, but very sure. briefly, what do you make of that? So I think the whole uh, issue of ch feeding children, which is absolutely fundamental, um, has got caught up in the political headlight here. And it's something which failed yesterday, I think, because it ended up as a secondary issue here. Um, it is too important for that, and I do think people have to work together to put this aside. There has been a lot put in over recent months, which means it's even stranger to not put that extra 40 million in over the next few uh, weeks. That's what Wales is doing, that's what Scotland's doing. And at the end of the day, yes, of course, all those long-term plans that need to be there, all of the different ways of, of, of supporting children, really important, but free school meals, be they in school or not, it does what it says on the tin, it gets straight to kids, you know they've got a meal, and actually that's what gives ki uh, kids and parents confidence too.